Right guys, welcome back to another episode of Ginger Girl Walkabout. Obviously I'm Kai. Today you join me on the 1st of November. We're out having a nice little bit of time, practice some skills, cook some grub, and a few other little bits and bobs I imagine. So stick around and we'll find out together. I imagine as well, you can see, I haven't got my normal bit of kit. I've got a bottle, some rope, a blanket wrap with all my other bits and bobs in it, and me kettle. Not doing an overnighter, it's just a day thing. We're going to have a laugh and get up some bits and bobs. You can see my little pouch I made, my leather pouch. I've got a few bits of flint in there. I've got some flint nap and stuff in my bag, which I've been giving a go, having some fun with. That I cut out of some uh, leather with a bit of stone, a bit of flint. One side was done with a knife because I was rushed for time, and then I just made away basically. So, we've been having good fun, even though I haven't been out in the woods practicing skills like that. I can still practice skills at home. But, let's get on with it. Just like that, we've unwrapped the bundle pretty much. It was just a quick little uh, Canadian jam hitch and then just kind of rolled down into a trucker's hitch. So, I'm kind of spreading this out as best I can without keeping it off the floor. But because it is due to rain, possibly, I am chucking the uh, MTP poncho up above us. So, we've got a nice, lovely film in place. If it does rain, and obviously bunges everywhere. Can't never have enough bunges. The right people, obviously, you can see tarps up, my little poncho, kits all there, out of the way. But right now, I need to get some firewood because I haven't got a stove or anything like that with me. So that is my task for now. I might bring you along collecting some firewood. I don't really see the point. Everyone shows you. Uh, firewood collection if i find some interesting obviously i'll come get you but from there i'll probably see you in a second we're going to be using some fat wood to get the fire going it is pretty damp and wet up here and this stuff i've never had a problem with getting a fire going apart from in dartmoor which was once and yeah that's just safe to say that was a disaster trying to get a little fire going but we did have or staves in the end, but that's just life. So I'm taking my knife. This is one that I did the handle on. Perfect for a lefty like me. So we try and get a few nice little shavings. should be plenty. I'm gonna make a couple little shavings like that one. Oh, 
that should be plenty. I'll stick that back on my kit pile. Put my knife in the sheath after I clean it. I don't know if you can see that, but he's away. Now we'll go get a fire going. Right. We got our fatwood shavings. We'll stick him down in here. Make sure we get them all nice in there. We got some fatwood shavings. Stick them, uh, not shavings, like twigs. We got our trusted fire still. Could use it as a priest with a fish. Got a knife, got there we go. That's it, get some good sparks on it. Can't go wrong. Cannot go wrong. What we'll do quickly though is we'll get our first stage kindling on. What we'll do is we'll just post these down through, giving some of the for the flames to climb, basically. We'll get these ones on as well, ready. It gives them a chance to dry out. But as you can see, that fire is starting to climb nicely. So we'll let that catch and then we'll get the rest of it on. Once we get brew ready. Look forward to this. A couple of you might be wondering what this is. Well, I made myself a pot hanger quickly. Just had a bit of firewood. Me, um, oh, kettle's over there. Sorry, I'm stood in the smoke here. But basically, I can just hook me kettle on and then just bring it over and just make sure that settles in there nicely and just get the process going of a coffee of a coffee that is that i'll add a few more notches make it a bit better a bit later on i think but depends how long i'm gonna be here but there we go Coffee is on the go, people.
you all right? I just thought I'd quickly show you this fire's going nicely, coffee's made. It all happened whilst I was setting this up, getting this searching. But this is my little um, pouch I made. I'm sorry about the footage, it's a bit grainy because we're quite low light, my phone's doing its best. But that's my little pouch I've made. That I've been putting the bits of stone that I've been working with, like this bit of flint. Nice bits of flint that I've been working with. But I've got some sausages I plan on cooking. I've already started to peel some of the bark off. So I can cook my sausages. And this is all I'm doing, a bit like with a knife, just using a bit of flint instead. That's it. Just gently taking off, as you can see, the little bits of greenery that we don't want. Got a few different edges to use, that's the beauty of it. Yeah, there we go. I've got a nice little edge. Yeah, you've got to be careful that you don't cut your fingers at the same time because obviously different parts of the stone is sharp. A bit like what you would with a knife. Just watch your fingers. But to be honest, it works a doddle. It works really well. I find anyway. So that's one of my bits, that little tiny, oh, I'll try and see if I get it so it's light enough, that little bit. And I'll see my bigger bit as well. That's it, there's the edge. Sit here and do this, and I'll get the coffee, um, coffee, and my sausages on. I got um, caramelized red onion sausages from Morrison's. So we're gonna do them. Whilst I do this, but to be fair, I'm quite enjoying using stone tools at the moment. Um, using them to make leather bags. And all other kinds of bits and bobs like that. I do quite enjoy it. Satisfying. Like that's what I kind of do in my spare time if I'm not like uh, with family, up in the woods, shit and stuff like that. Right, enough of me doing this, I'll bring it back in. Right, it's about six o'clock. As you can see, it's dark. I'm glad I got me a torch. Obviously, I still got to walk back. Um, still in me shorts, as you can probably see. But, yeah, I've been busy. Just haven't been filming, just been chilling out, relaxing at the same time. But, I'll flip you around and show you what's going on. Yeah, I've got some more water on, making a brew. Got some sausages on there cooking a beaut. It's been on there a while. It's doing me heading because the fire ain't the best. The wood's uh, quite, quite damp. There's me tin ready to do me char cloth in a bit. Get these sausages. Feeling beautiful. But, yeah, I've been sitting on that bit of leather I brought with me. Obviously, all me shit. But oh, I've been busy making myself a Roy Shaw. Uh, Pack frame. Couldn't find uh, really any straight wood here, but it'll have to do. So when I carry my kit back, it's gonna be sat on my back. Like such, so quite happy with that. This. 
Seems like the water is done. Lovely. A nice bit smoky. Um, got the char cloth going, sausages are still on. But I just thought, whilst I'm waiting, just sit here, do a little bit of flint napping, see if I can get any nice flakes to pop off. But trying to just have a look here. I'm new to just put a bit of them and a bit of stone. So I don't know. Just give it a go and see what happens, I don't know. little bits drop any nice bits nah but yeah basically that's kind of how it goes but I brought this bit of flint um didn't didn't find it but that there is a pretty damn sharp edge Some of these other bits ain't much yet, to be real. So you just get rid of these. No, I'm not trying to make out like I know what I'm doing because I almost don't. <laughs> I'm just replicating what I've seen and just having a go. So. Where to where do I wanna hit it? This bit probably be the better bit to work with. It's going to be a bit tricky, well I find it is anyway.
couple of little ones. Won't be worth it. <laughs> I heard all this because oh. a little bit there. They got research on them. Lovely. Some random little chunks like that. Mm. Once again, you get those little bits like that. Nothing substantial. But that's basically all I've been doing. Um, No, not that bit. Yes, I do. You can see that's a nice little bit there. And it cuts off beautifully. So, yeah, I've been doing that, enjoying it to be honest. It's not a skill that a lot of people know, and I thought, well, why not learn it yourself? Because I'd like that to learn that type of stuff. So yeah, I got my sausages. They're a bit cut because I wanted to make sure they were cooked. Because the fire ain't been working the best. But they look good to me. Nice. Caramelized onion. Mm. That is good. That is good. really taste the caramelized onion in it. It's absolutely superb. If Morris and George do go for once. They was good. But I'm gonna sit here, eat the other one, get the fire going a bit more. Then I'm gonna slowly start packing up I think because the time's getting on. It is pitch black up here. And I still got to walk back, and my torch is the only source of light I got, other than anything. So, I'll see you guys in a minute when I'm kind of starting to pack up my stuff, I think. So, yeah, my charcoal's done. All nice and done. 
and so I just grabbed a bit of uh, flint out of my kit. Funny enough, one of the bits I scraped uh, some of the thing with. And yeah, I just want to test out my um, char cloth. I want to just see. Take a nice little bit. What I'll do is I'll just kind of fold it. Basically, just to kind of give itself a bit more catch. going quite nicely so it works quite well what I'm going to do now is just quickly put it out but that's good because now my char cloth is all ready to go with my flint and steel kit and yeah that is a uh, one that I've used as well. I don't know where you can see that. It's got a saw blade style thing. And obviously that was a nice fish edge. But I'll just touch that back up. But for now I'll just chuck it in with me flint and steel. And that's all good. Shower off some blood. So I'm happy with that. So yeah, like this is the start of what I'm doing with me um pack frame. Just kind of make sure that it's plenty wide enough. Make this one if I get this in and then fold these in. That give me a little flappy bit at the top. I can get this to lay right. Then from there, all it is is lashing it up. So that's what it'll look like, but it'll have a lot more cord around it in this. It'll be filled up more when I do that, which will be just after this coffee. And the other thing I got was this bit of a. Oh, what was it? It's bolted ash. Because I got um, two handle projects in mind. For, um, two different um, blanks. One's a knife blade, be about this. So once it's done, it'll probably be that long. 
never when I'm cutting a machete down to fit my uses and sizes. I'll be cutting probably about that much of the blade length from the back and then attaching a handle. That's why I got this. So in all that would be about that big I think. Just a shortened machete. It'll work perfect for me. So I've packed all my kit up into me um blanket. And all I'm doing is I'll fit this onto me pack frame. I'm gonna use two bungees for this should be enough. At least I think it should be. I'll decide where I want it to sit. I think about there. It's perfect. Yeah, I'd say like that. Should stay all fine just there. So that's one on there. He ain't going anywhere anyway. Alright, so we got that one there. We'll come under here. Like such. Bring that one. Ain't coming off there. He's on there nicely. So what I'll do is I'll get another bit of cordage, loop him up ready, and we'll bust the move in a second. So we've got our pack frame, we've got our what's gonna be our straps and that. Just remember it's like this. Yeah, I like to make sure mine are nice and tight if I can help it. Just gonna set these out. Just make it a bit easier to strap up in a second 
Right, let's pick up the last few bits I've got to put in my pocket and we'll get going. So obviously I've picked everything else up. Ain't left anything as far as I can tell. So we basically to stick these on. I find I like to just stand like this. Get it on both sides and then just lift it up. So you end up with it sat on your back like such. Same grass comfort for you. You can. And you want to hand around that side like such. I don't know if you can see it. On the lower beams. Uh, lower beams, the back rest. But you want to set that up, get it to where you find it comfiest. And then all I do just sort that out is just literally over and like such nothing special just rudimentary get the job done type thing and then I like to do it quite nicely so it sit quite nicely on your back sad comfy and it's not like it inhibits any of your movement. So that's the post for cough factory. So now we're going to skedaddle because it is pitch black, it is late, and well, I just want to go home now, go chill out, have a nice coffee, have a shower, get cleaned up, get on with the rest of the night. <laughs> So I thought I'd take you on a little bit of a walk back with me in the dark so you get to see kind of what I get to see because I don't often do this it's just because I come out late and I still wanted to get on and do some of this right now so then I could look trickling stream this floods from time to time throughout here but it's quite nice, just chilling out. So yeah, I thought I'd just show you exactly. Got to follow this up all the way out there. Practically walking in a stream. That's like running off from over there, as you can see, all down there, and we're off this way. <sighs> then we got to go to the right. And off we go. I'll just open it out, fall over it. But yeah, whilst I've been walking, I've heard some dog walkers. See, this is the problem about up here. Like with all the mirror bikes and everything, it does make it pretty sloshy and terrible, I find. Yeah, I'm kind of out of breath. It's Hard walking out the hills. So it's not too bad though. I've seen plenty of squirrels today and loads of birds. Yeah, I haven't been able to get anything on film wildlife wise. Thinking quick enough. If we're lucky, we might see something in 
to the bush line or somewhere. I don't know the amount of noise I bloody make. But then I'm not up here trying to hunt. All I am trying to do is get home. So not like it makes much difference. Gotta be careful where you step as well. <laughs> but at the most, if we're lucky now, we might see a rabbit or a fox. So if I do, I thought I saw a thingy. The problem is, Bristol's just down through there. So a lot of time you think you've got eye shine, and then you have to kind of turn your head and you see the light's still there. It's because it's Bristol. But it's pretty nice, nice chilled little wander. Pretty fucking filthy now after all the rain. But this is such a big, big space. Like it is cool how uh, the motorcyclists and that also come up and use it, even though they leave it like this. Great big ruts everywhere. But. I think everyone should have the right to, oh, what's the word, enjoy their hobbies, like freely to an extent, like say, like motocross and things like that. But the landowner up here is an absolute lovely chap. So what he did is he got a field that basically you can't exactly get to unless you cut basically loads of woods out the way. So what he did was give it to the youths to ride their motorbikes on. Um, so they basically stayed out of his field and went riding up and down the road. So that's why it got the name KMX track. But that's miles back that way. Well, as you can see, it ain't really just grass and everything. Don't we see anything there until we get back in towards Bristol. But it is what it is. <laughs> 